Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Krypton. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, there's a whole thing with Zod. Now, my big question is, obviously, I already said it last episode, I knew that weapon would not be enough to take down Doomsday. It is what it is. But my question then becomes... Did Zod think it would, or was the plan always to capture Doomsday? That's what I'm curious about. Um, I mean, I'm sure, like, if he could utilize it like that and take down Doomsday, it's like, oh, this weapon is useful. But the fact is that even after all that, Doomsday wasn't dead. That might have been when, like, well, we need to, I need to make sure I get this under my control. So the whole point is that they kind of scrape through, kind of carving through a lot of his head just to kind of get to his brain. And along the way, we kind of access Doomsday's brain and kind of learn where Doomsday comes from. We go back like a thousand years ago in the past to understand that basically it was a civil war on Krypton between Argo and Kandor. And so it turns into a situation of there's this dude, Dax. He signed up to be an experiment, you know, a subject so that he could get the powers necessary to end this war, essentially. Now, what's interesting, and it's, it's kind of where my head kept floating back and forth, my most of my knowledge of Doomsday stems from from Smallville because obviously like season 8 he was like the main antagonist so the thing with Doomsday in that series he had a human form um and was played by Sam Witwer which obviously I made comparisons you know made reference to that uh, during Supergirl but nevertheless um because he pops up in Supergirl as a different character as a and like I said, I'm not going to go down the whole rabbit hole. If you're familiar with what I'm talking about, you get what I'm talking about. But nevertheless, he had a human side, and every once in a while he'd lose control because Doomsday was kind of rooted in his DNA and would kind of pop up. Very similar. Like, I made comparisons to, like, the whole Rain situation. Like, Rain is kind of very similar in the same regard. Rain, the character that popped up in Season 3 of Supergirl. So my question then becomes, like, in this, it seems like, obviously, Doomsday started off as, as a human and then became... Well, Doomsday. He started off as Dax and became Doomsday. I said hey, human, but I meant Kryptonian. But in that regard, it seems like in Smallville, to my recollection, he started off as like he's always been that creature. But when he landed on Earth, the whole point was to kind of make him seem human. So he, I think, he was made to adapt to it. So he appeared human most of his life. Like I said, kind of similar to Rain, if I remember correctly. Once again, it's been a while since I went back. Like I was, it was like two or three years ago when I rewatched Smallville. So. I'm not remembering this correctly, but obviously that was interesting too, because if I remember correctly, Doomsday was a kid at that time, came to this earth, like I said, it was like parallels between Doomsday and, you know, Cal, um, comma in a similar vein to Kara and, um, Rain, but the whole situation is like, in this, it's like, it doesn't seem like that human side will ever pop up again, but to me that adds an interesting element, because like I say, I feel like in the comic books, my understanding has always just been like, Doomsday's just a mindless killing machine, so I don't know if there's ever been like that, once again, Kryptonian, you know, because I want to say human, but you get what I'm trying to say, that Kryptonian, like, essence of a person being there rather than just being a thing i was always under the impression it's like oh it's just a thing and it gets morphed into like it, it was created like it's 100 percent a science experiment it started from nothing and was created i didn't realize i'm curious in the comic books is that something that's true to the character that it started off as someone and then became that something into becoming you know doomsday and i'm curious about it but it does seem like they are keeping true to the whole aspect of doomsday's whole thing it's like you know i brought it up previously doomsday's thing is adapting like every time you hit doomsday it comes back stronger and strong i think i think i'm what i'm pulling that from is also because i forgot because he popped up in the um in death battles you know formerly screw attack but now just purely death battles but death battles uh that was a thing about and i don't think they ever referenced him being like um like a having some Kryptonian characters. I think it was just like it was an experimental creature that was left in the wild to kind of adapt and survive. In this, they took a person that they killed him with different things. Every time he'd come back, he'd have resistance to the thing that killed him. So it's kind of what I said before, but now it's even more horrible. I mean, it's not like Doomsday's story was kind of nice to begin with. I mean, it's still kind of messed up to do that. But it's even more messed up. It's like, oh, because he thinks. And that's, to me, I think it's the irony behind the story. And I think that's kind of the whole point. They make that line of like, oh, he's like, I'm going to be a superhero. And it's like, how ironic. You think you're going to be the superhero when you literally become the most, one of the most dangerous things in the universe. The, the irony behind that. And the sad thing is like the reason why you became this monster was to protect the planet, the people you love, and you become a literal world destroyer, you know? 
which is interesting because once again, I always make comparisons to Rain because Rain is a, a literal world destroyer, but Doomsday kind of falls in that same line. So it's crazy um, to think about all that. And even what was easier, obviously, like we know, we learned back in season one that the elves and the Zods work together to make this thing happen. And it's kind of interesting while everything's going down. It's like you see the way the Zods are. They're really, and I guess that's the comparison that's also being made. And I thought that's such a fascinating thing that Zod's like, I, you know, all that you went through because obviously going through his memories and seeing everything. It's like everything you did was to sacrifice. You sacrificed everything for Krypton and it's like I can understand like he's like I was literally made the Zods were made to protect Krypton that's kind of like all there is to us that's why we're so OCD about it that's why Zod is the way he is because that's how he was manufactured that's what his main purpose in life is to protect Krypton and its people Obviously, he takes it to a more extreme route to the point that to sort of keep Krypton alive, he wants to wipe out everything else to basically make it Krypton as well. Like I said, terraforming worlds and stuff like that. So it's just so fascinating to obviously see the parallels. Like, it never would have crossed my mind to think. Because I always thought, like, Doomsday was just a straight-up killing machine, but to understand that Doomsday was, like, a weapon to stop war, and now on top, well, that was mentioned before, but now to kind of get that story now, and he's seeing Zod beside him, it's like, you definitely see the parallels of, like, these two villains are so similar in that regard, and I said, because, once again, like I said, Doomsday's always just kind of been a killing machine, like, I'm sure there was a reason for it, I forgot the reason why Doomsday came about in the comic books, because I'm not that familiar with it, but it's something that came in the rundown in a death battle, I... Like I said, it's been a while, so I don't remember as well. But I don't know. Like, the whole thing is just kind of fascinating uh, regardless. But the point I was going to make is, like, the Zod, in that particular case of making Dax into Doomsday, it's like, he was super being like, no, 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 we shouldn't do this. But she's like, no. Like, yes, we have to cross this line. It's a terrible thing. But it's for... It's kind of for the greater good. And it's just, you know, like I said, Zods are the ones that are usually kind of what do whatever it takes. And the fact is he had reservations and the L didn't. I just think that's kind of interesting because the L's are always kind of seen as being like, oh, the scholarly types that almost kind of do no wrong, which we can see a long list and long history in many different regards of just kind of how the L's kind of approach a lot of things. Just in many different regards, whether it be Smallville, whether it be this, whether it be... Supergirl, they kind of showcase that the elves weren't perfect because no one is perfect. People are going to make mistakes. So, but that's always the thing that the elves seem like they're always held in such high regard, like they never made mistakes. They made plenty of mistakes. So, I just thought they could just kind of uh, fascinate in Lauren. And it's kind of sad because his wife and Naj sees what he became. It's like literally, it's like it's for her, it's like it was all for nothing. My husband is turning his monster for nothing because the war is over. But the L is like, no, 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 no. There's always going to be something on the horizon because, like, there's always going to be an issue with resources. So it's not just about what's happening now. It's to pretend, prevent any bad stuff from happening further into the future. So it also becomes a question of, like, okay, so how do we go from there and a thousand years ago to it being locked away? Like, obviously, like, Doomsday must have been free, caused mass havoc, and that led to it just being locked away? Or was it just because they... Because I, I wonder... Because I'm trying to remember from season one if they reference... I don't know if... I don't think they reference it actually being ever free. Like, I'm curious if they actually never let Doomsday out. And it's just kind of like, well, we don't need him out, so we'll lock him away. But it's most likely Doomsday got free. And that's why that pe the people that were sent, you know... Um, Rika and her people were tr so intent on keeping Doomsday locked up. It's because Doomsday had gotten free at some point had caused mass damage and it's like oh you have to learn from our mistake because obviously because they made this thing so invulnerable just literally nothing could, nothing on krypton that could kill it because even the weapon you know like i said uh zod was using could not kill it took it down but didn't kill it um what's interesting is like by the time anaj finds them about you know the whole you know doomsday situation it's like well we're almost done making them pretty much invulnerable to everything the question then becomes did they finish that or did something else come up and we never got to see the continuation of that but maybe something came up so it might have certain weaknesses that it just hasn't really showcased yet. once again it's just it's kind of interesting to also know that technically from a certain aspect you can look at doomsday as a zombie like a heavily scientifically modified zombie because it's like Dax died and came back and it's just and when especially when you see like the veins and kind of scars that were there his eye kind of getting all like milky one of his eyes is like that like ugh. which is actually kind of like a sad and tragic thing when you think about all that he went through and them kind of poisoning him burning him then his body adapting and the bones and the bone shards coming out of his body like it's super messed up you know 
like them adding a Kryptonian element to it like that, making it kind of a, not just like some experiment that was a thing, which that in itself is, maybe that's even sadder, but the add in effect is it's a person that's in pain that's literally being killed and resurrected. Like I said, Doomsday story either way, whether it's the traditional more of it being an experiment or whether this, like it's, it's, it's still an experiment, but you get what I'm trying to say. I'm kind of going on a huge tangent, but I just thought the whole situation was fascinating. I wonder, like, I feel like, I don't remember if they said they had any children or not. Because I'm curious, like, if any more of Dax's family is still alive on Krypton or not. Like, did his lineage keep going or did him and Anaj never have kittens? You know, I'm, I'm wondering about that. So there's that side of things. Then there's the other side of things where you have, you know, I was actually thinking last episode, I was like, oh, wow, is Seg really going to listen to Brainiac? It's like, no, he's not going to take Brainiac to a ship because it's like, I'm not stupid. I know what you have planned. Like, the moment you get to your ship, you're going to basically reconstitute yourself and you're going to go and do what you were going to do originally. So it's like, no, I'm going to take you to the um, Fortress of Solitude and basically the little bit that's left of uh, Brainiac it's inside of him. It's right there in his brain stem. So now it's a situation where Nissa has to cut it out. And Val, the computer system, is like, all right, have you used the son uh, sonic scalpel before? She's like, yeah, I've used it all the time. He's like, all right, good. And she's like, no, I was being sarcastic. He's like, sarcasm, right. And then I love, like, you know, him giving her the speech of being like, no, no, no. The fact of the matter is believe in yourself. You can do this. And she's like, oh, yeah, that's nice, Seg. You beautiful speech. But it's like, that's actually stupid. I love, she doesn't say that, but that's kind of paraphrasing because it's like, that's stupid. Yeah, believing in myself isn't really going to help with this situation when I've literally never done what I'm going to have to do to you performing major surgery that could kill you. But he says, yes, it's not realistic, right? And it's like, what about everything else you've done? Would, it, would you just call it realistic doing what you did on Wagthor, being able to sneak the codex from underneath what about going to zod grabbing your baby and then jumping out a window hoping that a skimmer is going to be there to get like you want to call that realistic it's a fact is and i love it it's just so beautiful him saying like if you could see yourself the way i see you you'd never be afraid of anything because i've seen how powerful how good how amazing you are if you believe in yourself the way i believe in you you never fear anything and she's like how do you always know how to say the right thing and it's like, as you know, as someone who lived in the Rankless district, it's like you kind of found a way of, you know, getting very good at talking your way out of situations. So I thought that was kind of neat. But also when he's like, OK, you know, I don't want to pressure you or anything, but it's like, you know, basically, well, you kind of don't have to. What was it he was saying? Like, basically, you know, oh, it's all going good. I mean, do know that, you know, if things kind of go wrong, like you're going to do serious brain damage. I mean, I love Val being like, ah, more sarcasm. And this kind of half hearty, half, half laughing is kind of like shut up. Uh, but it's like, hey, we did it. I also thought some other interesting things. I was, once again, the question I kept wondering, it's like, what's that whole Jorel situation going to be like? Because I was thinking, like, is that going to be yours and like his other kid? But I was like, what about this whole Corvex situation? What we're going to do is, oh, no, we're switching that up. Because, and, it, and I like how they went about it because this is like, I don't want the Vex name to continue. Like, the Vex name is kind of smeared because of my father like what he did to the people of Kandor you know just every his machinations as well as just what he made me into like who I am is a reflection of the Vex name and it's like I don't want our child to carry that legacy which is funny when you actually think about it because once again the elves played a part in creating the monster known as Doomsday and the ramification that has for the DC universe is kind of like uh, not like they were the best of people too once again people make mistakes but still it's, it's just kind of interesting because I think in the comic books that's not the case I don't think the elves have anything to make do of making dudes. I think that is specifically tied to the show. So it's just interesting to know that Superman's legacy is tied, I mean, technically speaking, four way tied with like four villains, and you know, but like directly connected because obviously, connection to Brainiac, the heavy connection to one of his greatest nemesis, Zod, and as well as the creature that's killed him in the comics, Doomsday, to know that there's a direct correlation between his family and them, it's, it has that interesting element to it. But obviously, the show is kind of making those connections. Whether they naturally happened in the comic books or not, I know Brainiac, depending on the continuity, is connected to Superman's, you know, Kryptonian past and stuff like that. Like I said, it depends on the continuity. Uh, obviously, Zod would be, too, but to know that, like, Doomsday would be in that direct correlation, because obviously, Doomsday stems from Krypton naturally, I think, even even though the L's had nothing to do with it, if I remember correctly. Like I said, I could be 100% wrong. Like, I'm not that well-versed in Doomsday, so this is just me remembering stuff that I've picked up over, over time, but regardless, it's just interesting to think about. 
But um, yeah, she was kind of like, yeah, I want our child to be an L. I'm like, oh, that's dope. And then like, it's like, oh, core L. But it's like, no. I'm like, okay, so how are you going to get the Jor L? It's like, okay, it's typical in their family for a child to get the name of an ancestor. And we're going with Val's father, who was Jor L, a scientist and stuff like that, which is like, oh, well, we do know that Jor L is a scientist. So it's like, oh, kind of works out. And it's like, oh, that's so dumb. Even the whole thing of Seg wearing, like, it's like he's wearing a black shirt with the um, symbol. My mind immediately goes like, oh, yeah, that's like Smallville, where um, Clark became the blur for a while. He was wearing a black shirt with the L symbol of hope, as what well, L family crest, that obviously means hope. And he was wearing a black jacket. That. But if I remember correctly, he also wears black when he's, like, an evil version of himself, right? Like, it's kind of what Justice League was kind of going to be potentially where the storyline was of him being resurrected and being evil. They did that, but he just didn't have the attire to match. But I think the whole, like, him fully in black and everything, that's supposed to be Clark or Cal when he's evil. So maybe, you know, but my mind immediately, just because it's what I'm most familiar with, I immediately go with, like, the blur. But maybe that, even back then, that was supposed to be a reference to that. Either way, uh, I just thought that was kind of fascinating. So there's that. And then there's a the whole interesting thing of like, oh no, uh, Brainiac got free and he took over Val as a part of the system. Which also begs the question, inside the Fortress Stadu, does that mean that Val's no longer there because he became the overwritten by Brainiac? It's actually kind of sad if that is the case. But now it's like, and what was interesting, it's like, no, you know, it, it, what's really interesting is like, you know, Seg is like, no, I know what you were up to, but Brainiac is like, if you had just gone with what I wanted, none of, we wouldn't even have to worry about this. Like, I would have honored our deal, but he's like, no, you wouldn't have, which is like, it's hard to say whether Brainiac would. I think because he's actually become very attached to Seg, he was like, oh, like, I actually would have kept up our end of the bargain. But for him, it's like, I don't destroy worlds like you kind of think I do. Yes, basically there might be ramifications for me doing but for him it's like i'm preserving this world and culture like if i had encased candle like i did i'm literally saving you from yourself because you ultimately would have been the, your own destruction anyway you know so i'm just kind of protecting you a little bit but it's like no it's like you can disguise it like with these platitudes of yours but at the end of the day you're just a monster causing a lot of destruction and so the ship comes to you know, it's above Kandor and everything. I'm like, oh, this isn't good. You even seeing Zod kind of flipping out. I'm like, okay, so this is going to motivate Zod to hurry up the whole situation and get, you know, Doomsday under his control so he can fight Brennan. And I was like, that must be the case that they're going with. But turns out that's not the case. It's like, but he's even offering, but Brennan's even offering, oh, Seg, come with him. I'm like, what? And it's like, he spent some time with Seg. He finds Seg fascinating, which maybe that can kind of correlate to why he's so kind of interested in Superman. I mean, he's interested because he enjoys rarities, special things, unique things. What is Cal, the last son of Krypton? Of course you want to be the most fascinating thing. Of course I want you to study you because not only you're a Kryptonian, also, you know, the fact is what the Yellow Sun does to you, making you literally one of the strongest beings in the universe. You know, so that adds so many levels to it. But also this adds this element of like, okay, it's even more personal for him because it's like, oh my God, like I've been obsessed with the L family for years. It's kind of what you can make that assumption with just depending on how, you know, everything ends up ultimately playing out. But it's like, because he couldn't get sick, he took Jor-El because it's like, oh, this, because jor is the next line in the legacy. It's like, well, if you're not going to come with me, Sag, and you're going to put up some other struggle, why don't you just take your baby, which Nissa breaks down from? It's like, no, went fault tooth and nail to get her baby back just to lose it. I didn't see that coming. I didn't see him taking jor -El. I was like, I figured he was going to do something sneaky at the end, but I didn't see that coming. I was like, I figured it might have been something related to Nissa, but regardless, it's like he took the baby, Brainiac, and the ship are going. It's like, okay, what? Where where's that storyline going? Um, <laughs> that's gonna be interesting to find out. Um, I guess maybe we'll circle back to kind of like potentially joining forces with Lobo because Lobo wants Brainiac dead. So if Seg can find him, they can work together to hunt him down. Maybe it becomes a situation of Zod, Lobo, and Seg have to work together to kill Brainiac because he's back in the ship and everything. We'll see. Um, so there's the that side of things. Then there's the whole situation with Kim, and it's like, you know, it's like, oh, Kim's going out on a mission, and you have uh, 
Adam being like, yo, what, what about me? It's like, it's Kim's mission. You're the one that has to stop. It's like, okay, can I? He's like, what? He's like, can I please? Of course you can join the mission. And he's like, yeah, but be careful. The whole radiation situation. Oh, the last guy. He was literally diarrhea. He had such diarrhea that he basically crapped out. What was it? Like his organs. I think specifically his skeleton. It's like he lived, but the pain, he was like, ah. Ah, making screaming noises like that and I'm like I was like Kim is such an asshole for saying that story it's like the thing is I thought he was gonna be like oh I'm just messing with you but I think a part of I think no there might be some truth to that but I even love the fact is that Adam's like no Kim he's like the fact is it's, it's crazy in the six months I mean you used to own a bar I mean it wasn't really that good I mean I mean, how did you even stay open? He's like, do you have a point? It's like, no, I'm just the fact is of how much you've grown. And it's like, yeah, like to see where Cam is now, that he is this person kind of taking charge and everything, leading this unit like this was kind of interesting. But also when the time came, it's like, OK, they're searching. It's like, oh, there must be more of like Sagittarii working for. Zod here with there are more enemies probably hidden here so we got to take them out people in his unit were saying that but Kim was like no he was even telling Adam is like no trust me he's like even I'm not 100% sure but let me check things out first which was the right move uh Kim's justification for it later on was kind of interesting because he was like yeah their biometrics they, their heat was so dim and it's like the caves they were in wouldn't normally do that to the readings so he figured as someone who grew up in the rankless district I know what being what hungry looks like what that effect has on the body and stuff so he recognized them like oh no they're just hungry so that's what made him kind of not be so on guard because this is kim's way of making up for that story that dev had told before about obviously he was like no let's leave these people alone they're potentially innocent but the orders came down to wipe them out anyway and sadly they ended up getting wiped out and kim didn't want to be a part of a situation like that again where innocent people ended up getting killed just on the off chance because you know no one was willing to take a chance to see like yo what's what's really good what's up you know and he was able to do that and adam even stepping up and being like the other people as well as the lady being like no like we're, cam could be in trouble he could be dead but he's like no you're gonna follow orders and stay behind and it ends up being innocent people you know so it worked out nicely and cam you know being you know Shows you how much he's grown and kind of stepping into the shoes of a leader, essentially. Uh, into the shoes of a commander, you know? I thought that was pretty dope. I thought it was interesting when um, Adam was kind of like, um, Val, you know, and he's like, right, Commander Cam. I thought Adam was being like, no, 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 I'm talking about me. Congratulate me. This isn't just Cam. This is on me. But it's like, no, it, you know, that was him being like, no, you Cam, show Cam the respect. I, I didn't think that. I thought he was talking about, no, no, show me some respect. I thought that's what he was aiming for. But nevertheless, I just thought that was kind of an interesting element, kind of showing like Cam's growth and everything to just kind of an addition. So I'm very curious. Obviously, like we have, you know, Val's squad and everything kind of doing their thing. Because not only did they, you know, this situation didn't end with them losing any people. They actually gained people because there were people that Zod left behind because it's like, oh, you failed with the whole Lysa thing. You didn't go rescue her. She's dead now. So he kind of gave them the middle figure and left them to their own devices. He hasn't given them any orders. So he basically left them for dead because it's like, obviously, that's when Zod's pissed. Everyone suffers his wrath. Those directly involved, those who had nothing to do with it. You know, it's like they couldn't, you know, they were waiting on your orders. So it's kind of messed up that you blame them for it but i guess maybe you can make argument he's so caught up in everything he's not thinking about them regardless a lot of very interesting things went down and i'm so curious to see where all this ultimately takes us going forward into the next episode it's definitely going to be interesting but really that's all i want to talk about to the next time we meet be happy be safe love life to the fullest and enjoy it good day and goodbye <laughs>